and thanks for coming and thanks a special thanks to dan um all right that's it for me dan whenever you're ready yeah, great. Uh, thanks for being here, folks. I know it's just a, a really wild time. I know you think it is too, because I'm looking at your Nick Cages right here on the screen. You should be able to see that the team here on the call is by and large, very stressed. Uh, I get that. Um, shout out to all the folks who are feeling uh, focused. Uh, which Nick Cage is that right there? Um, let me ask Gene, would you be able to turn off uh, folks their mute as they come on? I'm no longer able to do that, it looks like. I will uh, do. Let's see here. I just got it there. Yeah. So folks are focused. Uh, folks are uh, also feeling a lot of bees. I myself personally am in the meh category, just um, realizing that the flu of 1918 lasted three years. And I'm not sure I can do that. You know, just like, feels like a lot right now. I get that. Um, and so I'm seeing also from you folks, some, some elaboration there where um, people are saying there's just so many things demanding attention right now. Feels like I'm constantly fighting fires or bees as it were. Um, someone else elaborates on what those things are for them. The virus, the election, hybrid learning, hybrid learning, not a great learning model. Um, wow, like teaching two separate classes at the same time uh, while, while juggling, uh, while upside down, wild. Um, someone else has a sinus headache on top of all of that. Just a, a tremendously challenging time. And I'm just always so impressed uh, by teachers and so grateful to be in communities of teachers during this time. Um, so let me just uh, fire this up right here. Uh, let's see here. So um, who's in, yeah, whose voice is in your head right now? I'm Dan Meyer. I'm the chief academic officer at Desmos, where I think about teaching and learning in particular with technology, which hopefully will make me uh, of some use here. But I do want to say that the gap between people who think about teaching, who talk about teaching, and who actually do the dang thing um, has never been greater. You folks are out there actually like in harm's way, risking uh, your health and life to do the work of teaching. So I just want to, I want to, I want to couch that couch this whole presentation and say like hey if at any point you feel stressed out by this guy talking just ignore me and take care of yourself um, and feel no sense of obligation from anything I say here today um, what you're doing is good enough you're more than enough here um, teachers just put so much on themselves and this is just a time where you there's so much that's out of your control. All right, I just wanna say that. I know we're all pretty zoomed out at this point, so I'll keep this one fairly brief. I do wanna just say, we are in the middle of an apocalypse. There's no better word for it. And if you're like me, you hear the word apocalypse and you think of an image like this right here, like total cataclysmic destruction. Um, but I was in a sermon um, uh, at my church like in March when this all went down. And the pastor there, he, he noted that the word apocalypse has a different meaning in its original Greek, which is to say, it's not destruction so much as a great revealing and unveiling of things that could not be known um, without that big unveiling event. And we are learning so much right now. Um, this is one of the, the, the small, one of the few, one of the precious gifts of this moment is how much it reveals to us, revealing things about our, our economic and medical and racial infrastructure in this country, revealing how it's a terrible idea to have healthcare tied to a job at a time when no one has jobs, that kind of thing. And I hope it's revealing to you um, some of your priorities around education. I haven't checked this out yet, but I do wanna know, I'm, I'm just curious right here, what you folks are saying as far as your energy level right now goes. Yeah, your energy level right now is just rock bottom, 30% uh, energy there. Um, your preparation time is about half what it was. That's wild. Um, and that's, that's terrible, but it does crystallize and reveal to you um, what your priorities are for learning, for students. When you have less time, you're forced to make some pretty ruthless decisions. And that's what, what I wanna focus on here is what this pandemic has revealed to me and many of us about what's important about math education and what you can do to realize it. And that's connection and creativity. Uh, we are, Desmos is, um, my work is in the middle, in the intersection of so much teaching energy right now. So many teachers are using our work to support learning right now, which gives me a fantastic vantage point on what teacher priorities are. And I can tell you connection and creativity are those. I'm gonna uh, real fast here just mute everybody and we can turn your mutes back on in a, in a bit, but you're all muted. Cool, cool, cool. That's real. I think I heard a kid back there. My kids are, you know, just, just outside the door ready to take over my life if uh, they breach the, the wall. 
uh, the door. Um, here's the thing about these two attributes of learning is that one, um, they're a biological imperative. Like they're not, this is not just math learning. This is like human beings have a desire to connect with one another, um, to create things. We are a you know, tool creating species. Um, these attributes tie into biological needs of ours. Um, they're also mathematical, important mathematical needs that in mathematics, we believe, many of us, that um, it's necessary to create lots of representations of student learning, that students should be creating arguments, sketches, proofs, drawings, numbers, all of that. And that we should connect students together, teachers and students together, and connect representations of mathematics, connect all those creations. Those two attributes, connection and creativity, those are not just necessary for living, um, they're good for mathematics, and they're also highly, highly relevant. Your students in their day-to-day -day life, they are doing that, doing these things with their devices. They're creating, what are they creating? What do students create these days? Uh, you know, uh, emails, nah, that's for old people. Um, you know, they're creating, uh, uh, you know, tweets maybe, but, uh, you know, videos, TikToks, text messages. And those don't just like, those creations don't just stay on their phones. They connect to people with them and they, they share them with people to not just like have an entertaining time, but also to learn. They're learning through these, these attributes of learning right here. So my question for you over all this time is how are you facilitating mathematical creativity and connection between students, between teacher and students, between mathematical representations. Um, you, you folks ever heard of like Google Trends? This is where you can like type in a, you can type in a search term and see how it's been, how it's uh, search volume has changed over time. If you search for coronavirus, can you imagine can you draw with your fingers in front of your web camera? What will that trend look like? Ready for it? Got it in your head? This one's pretty wild to me. It's wild that, <laughs> Like it spikes right around March, granted, but and, and wow, like uh, search volume on coronavirus is down to very little right now relative to its peak. People kind of get what it's about really at this point. Um, here's my question for you. Khan Academy is a form of learning math online that has been pretty popular and prevalent in the world. And so I just wanna hold this up as a, a certain way of learning math online and contrast that with other ways. And what I noticed um, about search volume is that once, once schools started shutting down last spring, people turned to Khan Academy in a major way. Math teachers were looking at Khan Academy and asking themselves, is this a math class? Like, could this be uh, the replacement or the, the supplement for, um, for our work? And it turns out that yes, it is a good supplement for certain kinds of mathematics, but come the fall and people were much less interested in using Khan Academy, the limitations of certain online mathematics became really apparent really fast. I just wanna look at creation and connection in Khan Academy to contrast that with the kind of work that I see so many of you folks doing uh, with, with your classes right now. I went and I, um, I took all of grade eight Khan Academy a few years back. I am certified, um, great, I'm certified grade eight mathematics in Khan Academy. I'm pretty proud of myself. Don't take that away from me, okay? I need something right now, this is my thing. And as I took every single question, as I did every question, I wrote down what it was that Khan Academy, Sal Khan himself, was asking me to create mathematically. And so we have right here, there's, there's an other category, these top five, and in particular the top two, there was, were just dominated. What I, what I did mathematically was dominated by two kinds of mathematical creations. Hit that chat right now. Let's hit the chat. What do you think it was? What was the, the two, the, the big ones there? I have no idea how to access the chat anymore. Here's what, here's the deal, folks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to drop uh, the knowledge on you right here. Um, it was um, numbers was one. Multiple choice was the other. So just, just to call out two thirds of everything I created in grade eight math boiled down to not arguments or sketches or using my hands like on some, on some algebra tiles or something. Uh, it was just type a number in type a multiple choice response in, enter a multiple choice response, two thirds of what I did. Um, there was also coordinates and lines and polygons as one might expect, but overall, the experience students have in learning math and a lot of online spaces is something like this right here, where uh, you've, you've got basically these, just like you're just stamping out gears, you're stamping out these mathematical gears over time. It's the same kind of thing, feels kind of boring. I, uh, I drew this stick figure, it's terrible, but I had this image in my head, I had to communicate to you somehow, this is how I did it. So just like one gear after another. 
And so a couple notes about this. One is it's not, um, it doesn't tie into biological imperatives or being creative in lots of varied ways. It doesn't tie into mathematical mathematics we care about. It's not creative mathematics. Um, it isn't as relevant to, to students because they want to create in lots of forms. And it leaves, finally, it leaves teachers very susceptible to what we might call the, uh, the photo math problem. Have you folks been introduced to photo math already? Your students know about photo math. Most of them, many of them. Um, teachers, as it turns out, teachers know about photo math um, on various teaching forums. This one's on, on Reddit. A teacher seven months ago about when uh, school started shutting down notes that photo math is a scourge, calls out that it's a scourge. Um, then we have uh, this, the teachers though, they feel very differently. Uh, the students feel very differently uh, proposing marriage to photo math. Uh, you never disappoint me, never judge me for checking even seven plus eight. You tell me where I was wrong and you have all the answers I need. Um, but just like, like a lot of good marriages, even you kind of take each other for granted after a while. And, uh, you know, the, this student wants word problems to happen in photo math now. And this person um, is bummed that, uh, you know, photo math only took them 97% of the way. You know, students get a little bit demandy sometimes. This student right here um, found, in, this is on a Khan Academy forum and is uh, really just calling um, their, their, you know, their, their colleagues, their, their fellow students to arms using photo math. This is what's going on here. Photo math, if you have never seen it, don't know about it. It plays a bit like this right here. There's Khan Academy. There is a problem. You tap that red button. It senses what it is. And um, then we've got this right here, this answer. Just type that in. Again, um, over two thirds of Khan Academy eighth grade was, was numbers and multiple choice. Check. And there it is. Just nailed it just like that. That's photo math. And so what, I want, what, I, what I'm interested in here is how can we offer students more ways to be mathematically creative online than just numbers and multiple choice. We are trying very hard at Desmos with a series of free activities. You folks will um, get links to these at the end of this act, the, the notes activity you might be in right now. Um, but we're, like things like um, you creating equations that control uh, a turtle race, for instance, or creating polygons, creating written explanations, creating these kaleidoscopes, creating marble slides, creating these transformation challenges, sketches, more turtles, big fan of turtles, laser challenges, and uh, of course, pumpkins. And so uh, these are just a, a small sample of the ways that students could be able to be creative in online mathematics, more than number response, more than multiple choice. What I'd love to, uh, oh, I just wanna call out first of all, before I, I invite you to play around with some of those, is um, that Photomath has absolutely no idea WTF to do with any of these right here. Like, okay, uh, sorry, don't, we don't, we don't get it. Um, okay, uh, what are we here? Okay, uh, do you want me to solve this? Rewrite it maybe? No idea, it's, it just falls apart. Uh, this is transformation, I see rotation. Uh, is that like a, a 180 degree, degrees thing? Absolutely falls apart. Okay, okay, it doesn't, doesn't have any idea. So my point here again is that this is good mathematics. Uh, it is um, biologically important for people to be creative. It's more relevant for students. And crucially, it foils photo math. Take that photo math. I wanna give you folks five minutes, five minutes tops to um, go into our activity and to just play around with those kinds of creations and ask yourself, how is this feeling to me? Like, do I feel mathematically? Creative. So again, if you uh, head to student.desmos.com and type in that code, uh, you head over right now, you're going to, if you head to that right now, you're going to be able to, let's see, yeah, jump over into a series of screens where you'll get to create a turtle, create a polygon, create a kaleidoscope. And I'll be so curious to see what you folks can do, even in five minutes, the kinds of mathematics you'll be able to create. So we'll see you there back here in five minutes.
about two more minutes, folks, then I'll, I'll have you join me back at the Zoom window. I'm just on, on my side looking at what you folks are up to, and my mind's just blown at all the creativity here. A couple more minutes. If you're just joining, head to that link on your screen and type in that code, and you'll join us in progress. Fifteen more seconds, folks, and I'll pause you. This is just uh, some fantastic thinking I'm seeing from you folks, some fantastic creations. I can't wait to share them with you. Okay, you folks are paused there. Join me back at the Zoom window, would you? I uh, just want to call out a comment from Eric saying, thanks for the time to play. Amazing how that can help to settle my mind. wonder how many students see math as a calming activity. And uh, just so much going on there in that comment, I feel a little um, just kind of overcome thinking about, it's it just, it just a beautiful a beautiful sentiment, Eric. Um, and I'm sure that teachers, uh, including former teachers like myself, feel a lot of calm in doing this math, but I appreciate that Eric called out that some students might not feel the same way. And I don't think that anyone would associate, any student or teacher would associate the kinds of mathematics that results in a single right or wrong number or multiple choice response as playful. Um, whereas here we have someone, uh, Tony calls out, I wasn't sure why the first turtle didn't start from the beginning and I solved the problem through trial and error. Very cool. Like there, there's an element of play here where we are inviting your creations and being um, non-judgmental about it. I just, I can't wait to share with you some of these uh, brilliant responses from you folks. First of all, on the turtle side, um, I saw this and I was like, oh, what is this going to look like? D equals 50 T. That turtle's gone like that right there. Um, other folks had, um, you know, uh, turtles that were a little bit slower, 5T, for instance, and uh, that turtle was moving a little bit uh, at a more reasonable pace. And I, I saw other folks that gave their turtles a, uh, a head start, like a 5T plus 6, and um, that, that means that they saw that that keeps the turtle out there at a head start. And someone else did this, 6 minus 5T. What do you imagine that's going to look like? Isn't that a trip? Oh, that do. Same head start as 5t plus six, 
only it's moving backwards. Totally dig it. Such fun thinking there from you folks. Uh, the marble slides, uh, the, the, um, the, I, I love the kaleidoscopes here. I gotta admit, I'm pretty partial um, to the rotational symmetry. Are these all the same kaleidoscopes? This is kaleidoscope number three. Um, just beautiful use of color. That's a, a 90, what is that? It's, that's, a, that's a reflection. That's a, a, a mirror, both, both horizontal and vertical. Whereas these other ones are kaleidoscope two, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm such a sucker for the rotational symmetry here, honestly. This is kaleidoscope two as well. Yep. And this one's kaleidoscope two as well, I think. But um, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen a kaleidoscope three that took me, took me by su uh, surprise like this one did. Just extremely cool work right there. Uh, anyway, I love that. And I love seeing what you folks did with the marble slides. This one up being really challenging for folks. I totally get it uh, myself also. Let me see if this will ever load. I've got a bunch of folks in this activity. I'll present this one. Might not be able to. Um, yeah, lots of folks in here. So this one, uh, yeah, people were doing their best in the marble slides to get that uh, marble down to the lower slides. Let me see. That almost worked for us. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, check that out right there. Yeah, couldn't quite make it happen though. I totally get that. Um, and then other folks are like, okay, uh, all right, we're gonna stop it. It's gonna go down and then, ah, got stuck. I love that move though, creating that barrier, so fun. Um, and then this person here, like, what is going on here? How did you like, it? is that gonna, come on, come on, come on, come on back. Ah, it disappears, no go. Uh, but I just love the thinking. I love it. And this person here figuring out how to use these uh, domain restrictions right here, um, greater than eight and less than eight, to make it so that the lines kind of cut off like that. Super clever use of uh, domain restrictions. We still missed that one. Um, but I just saw so many. This person right here has a great idea that kind of like, okay, marbles, you're going to follow that path or else. And the marbles are like, nah, nah, it's all right. We'll go this way. Uh, I just love it. So, so it's cool stuff. Um, up here, if we, I think if we shrink the, if we, if we make this go even, cut off even sooner, I wonder if this will work. You just, you just got to trust the gravity, folks. You got to trust gravity to, to do its job. Anyway, this is a version of online mathematics that involves more, more creations than multiple choice and number response. And I'm not saying Desmos is the way. You know, we, we lack a lot of activities for K-5, for instance, um, but I hope you are looking for ways, even in this moment, especially in this moment, um, to invite students to create and then to connect with each other through their creations, which had the effect on Eric and others, I think, as feeling just calming in, in a way that math class um, rarely is. So. Um, let me see. I just, I just want to speak briefly about connection. Here is how we are seeing you folks at Desmos. We are observing you folks create connection with students in some fantastic ways. Um, you know, we've got right here. Uh, these are the most popular Desmos activities in this current school year. We can dig in on that. The y-axis is gone for uh, reasons of, of privacy. No worries here. But you see Marble Slides Lines is the second most popular activity people have done this year. And, and numbers five through two there are all fairly you know uniform they're, they're close together here you folks have seen transformation golf already in that in that list of activities marble slides you saw adding integers is a nice activity uh, for k5 check that out at teacher.desmos.com but the, the most popular activity oh my gosh far and away like not even close send the competition home is an activity called getting to know each other and it, it's uh, available in our notes document here at the end of this activity. There's all these links. Um, and all it is is it's, it's screens that teachers can insert into activities they create that look like this. Well, like, what's my name? What do I want to be called? What are my pronouns? Tell me about your name. Is there something special about it? Or, um, you know, what, what are the three topics you know a lot about? Or the especially crucial question, is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, really important there. I, can, uh, I, I grabbed a, another kind of uh, question for our introduction here today which looked like this. Um, I wanted to know where you folks would go if you could bust out of quarantine and visit any location in the world, where would it be? Um, Hawaii looking popular, uh, the East Coast looking very popular, perhaps it's like, cause we have a, a, a New York crowd here. So you have your favorite spots up and down the Eastern seaboard, some Europe, um, a pile of people in New Zealand, perhaps heading towards places where they uh, currently are uh, lacking a lot of uh, coronavirus infections, taking uh, your infections uh, out there. I'm sure they'd be thrilled to hear that. Um, but anyway, this is, this is a moment of connection where you, know, you see each other's responses, um, just as social media connects us with our 
tweets or whatever else, our Instagram posts, I don't know what you use, that feeling of connection is possible even through math activities. A couple other, um, let me just pull this up right on back here. Um, yeah, some, some really fun stuff. So here's the thing though, is that um, what a lot of online mathematics, the only thing that online mathematics in lots of its forms connects students to is to a box that tells the student what you did, your gear that you stamp out over and over again, it's right, it's wrong, it's right, it's wrong. It has no connection beyond that to a teacher, to other students, um, or any other living thing. You are, you are alone together. You're in the same, you're, you're all connected to the same, you know, uh, uh, throbbing internet, but you have no sense of one another in this thing. It's just you and the box that's telling you you're wrong. And I think it's interesting to see the effect that has on students, especially in this moment. Um, not long ago, the Gates Foundation ran a study on schools that had adopted personalized learning systems, many of which include technology just like this that tells students who are working at their own pace, um, if they're right, they're wrong, they're right, they're wrong. And the results were really astonishing in lots of ways, one of which was the sense of belonging students did or didn't have at their schools. So right here, there's a lot going on here, but I'll just call it out. Um, these left columns are schools that were not part of this personalized learning sample, generally higher than the right columns, schools and districts that were a part of this sample. And you can see that on these measures of, of belonging and safety and feeling integrated into a community, sometimes computers can create a sense of disbelonging for students and detachment from their community. And that I'm gonna to submit to you is stems not from the math that we did in that five minutes back there where you saw other people's responses through me perhaps showing them to you or you saw um, other three other student responses earlier on in the first screen of the activity. It comes from just creating numbers and multiple choice responses and having a box tell you your thinking is either right or wrong. Not that it's beautiful or wonderful or thought provoking or humorous or any of those other things. That's very interesting to me. So what I'm trying to do, what we're trying to do at Desmos is this, is we have students that are creating not years or widgets, but these gem-like thoughts about mathematics, many of which are wrong. Like so many of you folks did not successfully complete the marble slides level, but I hope you heard from me in my voice, my affection for your thinking, um, my sense that being right or wrong was only one small part of this whole thing that in fact, the, 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 the in process rough rough draft thinking, as Amanda Jansen calls it, was what was so valuable about what you did. Um, and to, for that kind of thinking, for those kinds of creations, the, the box is useless. And instead, I wanna to submit to you that you, the teacher, become ever more useful and classmates become more useful. That we can um, enter into that mix there and look at that gem that students created, just like I did yours, and make it bigger and connect those gems together and send those over to students who say a positive word about it or ask a question, and it comes back to you in even better form, better shape than it was before. This is what is possible with mathematics in the best classes, either online or off. But right now, we're thinking about what's possible online. So again, I'm urging you folks to do what you can to find ways to help students be mathematically creative, and to connect them together, connect students together, connect teacher to student and uh, connect representations like the equation was connected to that turtle moving uh, on the race. I wanna close and just, um, you know, I'll, I'll invite you folks to, here, here's a, like, I think a major question that I think a lot of you folks are having. I see this online, I watch, I watch the Twitters too much. I see this a lot. How do we engage students uh, in, a, in a virtual, setting. You know, students don't have their cameras on. Maybe, you know, it's, you can't do an eyeball check or see who is like using their phone under their table, under the desk, you know, looking at their thigh, thinking they're being clever or whatever. Um, you know, it's just, it's all the usual tools you have to, to gauge engagement and respond to it. It's just taken away from you in an instant. And so what's possible? And 
I want to just offer you one anecdote that to me helps illustrate what's possible here. And that's when I, I was in a classroom not long before we were shut down, all of us. I was watching a teacher who's trying very hard to engage a disengaged group of students in, in grade eight mathematics. And um, he was using a lot of techniques from the PBIS systems, the positive behavioral uh, improvement or intervention systems, like you know, giving out classroom currency, classroom bucks to students who um, were getting quiet fast. You know, uh, uh, so and so's talking, all eyes on so and so. Now, 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 now. You know, like uh, five. You know, one one class dollar to you for being uh, attentive, that sort of thing. And students just like weren't really with it. Um, one student in particular would, would just like get up and start dancing, as a grade eight student does sometimes, just like not uh, defiantly or aggressively, just like, like couldn't really deal, and would get up and start dancing. And the teacher was was struggling, and I definitely get that and sympathize with that. Um, but the, the move that teacher did in a moment, um, the teacher said one thing after a period of work time. And it's the same thing I said to you folks at the end of our work time together in the, those activities. Um, and it brought the entire class to attention, engaged them fully. Even the kid who was dancing was locked in on the teacher at the front of the room. Not forever, not for 10 minutes, not for a minute, but for a moment, their attention was the teachers to lose or do something with. That thing the teacher said is the same as I said to you. I can't wait to share some of your ideas with you. That teacher in that moment um, was not just going to share his, her, their brilliance to the class, but had recognized in the class's work and their creations something of brilliance and said, I'm going to share this with you and put up on the board as I did with you folks snapshots of their work and built his explanations and developed the concepts using those as the foundation. And even that kid who was dancing had stopped dancing and said, that's mine right there. And I, don't think it, I don't think it was, I think he was uh, not correct about that, but it didn't matter. Just the sense that the, that the, the teacher cared that much uh, and saw brilliance in their creations was extremely important. So at the end of that activity, I'll put the, the link back up there in a second. You, you can get access to all of those activities. You can play around with them, teacher.desmos.com. You can email me, Dan at Desmos, tweet at me. Love to hear from you. But um, I just want to close and say it was very intentional that I did not call this presentation um, Connected and Creative Math Classrooms in a Time of Coronavirus. It had the C. It could have worked. But instead, crisis, and uh, we're in a current moment, a current day of enormous political turmoil in our country, and um, this is one crisis of many. They are numerous and ongoing. Um, I, I think in particular about uh, the environmental crisis that is enfolding our entire planet. These crises are numerous and ongoing, and I invite you to think about what is possible from your, your place as a math teacher. It's possible that you will teach um, the student who will have the great technological revelation in 10 years that will uh, reverse the effect of global warming and environmental degradation. Or you will teach the student who has um, the, the idea about economic models that will reverse uh, this uh, economic inequality and, and catastrophe we're experiencing. It's possible that's you, but let's be real. You teach so many more students, so many more things than just that. It would be a coincidence, a coin flip at best. Um, well, instead, you teach students about each other and themselves much more often. And I want to submit to you that math class is a class where um, students learn quite often, I am dumb and I am not worth a lot. And also my, my, my fellow peers, there are some of them, they are worth quite a lot. The sense of the haves and have nots, I think is strongest in math class more than any other class, like in English or science or language or history. It's kind of like, yeah, we're all on a continuum. Some of us are, are getting it, some aren't. We could work harder and get more, but in math class and math class alone, there's a sense that I am in or I am out. And we are entering in a time in our country's history, I think, where um, the question, am I in or am I out, is going to be on a lot of people's minds. And I hope you, through creative math experiences and, and highlighting the brilliance of students who don't often feel brilliant in math class, you will teach your students you are all in. You're all in, and I see you. You should see each other. And in doing so, play your part in healing our country and our world.
I don't know folks, or just get out there with a picket sign. I don't know, like, uh, you know, people who sell car insurance for a living, they probably aren't having this conversation or thinking these thoughts about like, how am I going to fix the world? But you know, your teacher, you, um, you know, what pleasures this job has, one of them is you are deeply tied into the fabric of humanity. So let's figure out what we're going to do there. And I'm not a teacher in the classroom right now, but I am, uh, I love teaching. I love students. I love math and I love all of you. And I um, hope that you will be in touch and um, let us know at Desmos. Let me know how I can support your work. Uh, very important work. So thanks for being here. It's a huge deal to be here. We're all zoomed out. If you have questions, toss them in the chat. Um, I'd love to just hang out for a couple minutes here and, um, and, and uh, grab a few questions. It's a big deal. All right, Dan. Well, thank you so much. You're a hero to many of us, and your tools have made so many kids learn math in a fun way. Let's look for questions. If you can't see chat, you can look in the bottom right of your toolbar on Zoom, but I'll, I'll screen them for you too. Nothing but gratitude so far, Dan. All right, I I'm, I'm here. I'm here, folks. Just kind of embarrassing myself for whatever reason. I still kind of overcome by the moment. Just a pleasure to be here with you. Um, Dan, a question from jo Jordan. Can you let me know why um, Desmos doesn't have a distance learning geometry activity set? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Uh, we should have a lot of things we don't have um, and geometry is way up there. So um, yeah, no disrespect to geometry at all. We love geometry. Our geometry tool isn't as good as our other tools, I think is a fair answer here. And uh, you know, there's, we have, there's other tools out there that um, you can Google around and find that do a great job with the geometry too. Let's okay, see. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. No, yeah. no, no. Uh, let me, uh, folks are asking me to unpause the activity. Uh, absolutely. Um, so if I unpause this, uh, what happens next is, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna unpaste it too. So uh, stop pacing. Let me also, I'm gonna jump to the first screen here. You folks can still see my screen, I think. Um, so uh, yeah, if you head to that class code, if you're new, head there, the very last screen has links to all those activities. They're all available for free. We, um, that's what makes it, it's money, just so you know, by um, letting companies embed our tools in their curriculum. And also we have a, a middle school curriculum and soon high school and K-5 um, that's uh, gonna be available this winter. There's a link there. Um, here's, here's on the Zoom window. Here's some links to what we've been up to today. And that's all available for free um, with many others, including a way to like create activities. So if you, um, if you want to, you can copy and paste any of those screens into um, your own activity you create at Desmos. Just Google around and you'll find out how to create activities um, or there's that get started link. If you folks are needing to, um, if your, your school has, New York State has um, some requirements for data um, privacy for students, which we just respect enormously. And if that's um, where your school is at before you can use this, please uh, email email um, me or tweet me. I'm gonna put my email address down below here uh, and I'll, I'll direct you to the right people. We, we have agreements in place across New York State. So I know it's possible. I know who to reach out to. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dan. I'm just getting to what am I missing here? Yeah, so we have um, tutorials at learn.desmos.com. Let's see here. Yeah, I think we're in good shape, folks. Um, yeah. Well, someone did say, how do you select what to share? I, I, do, I think this is just, this is one of the best things that we do. And so I, I will just model this explicitly on the screen right now, which is um, that when I, when I saw your responses, like these are just, this, you folks were just really, um, not everyone responded with something extra on the next Nick Cage screen, but this is just like you sharing of yourself and something I can do here to help you feel seen um, to help the class feel more cohesive is identify, you know, some, like, here we go. Like, I should have called this out. Like, I, I would have been really on my game if I had used this as a preface um, for this whole talk is like Charlotte Scott here says, this is, a, this is an anonymous name. You can anonymize people in this platform. So I just click this, I click this camera icon right here. There it is. And it says snapshot captured. And I might look and see, is there, Anything more here I can say, anyone else like speaking to um, connection? 
you know, and, and people are calling out lots of different important things. Wow, first year teaching, can't imagine. Um, yeah, anyway, and so I, I saw that and then I, I go to the snapshots tab here and there, there's Charlotte Scott. It's so hard to really connect with kids. And what I do is I scroll down and you can see the other snapshots I've, I've dragged into collections here. And I just press present alongside. Um, it's just really hard to connect with kids. And I can talk about that. I can uh, empathize with it and, um, you know, and, and speak with and to Charlotte. I can also, um, you know, I can, I can go to Charlotte's screen. I can, um, I can give, give Charlotte some feedback here. So if I go back to this original screen right here, I'll go find Charlotte again. Let's see, there it is. So I can, I can click on Charlotte's words here and click this icon at the top and say to Charlotte, yeah, uh, really feel that too. Let's talk about what's working and not and send that. And Charlotte will then see a little red icon up on uh, her screen that says, hey, I have feedback from my teacher. And this is another way uh, that's, that teachers can and students feel connected to one another in a time where connection is just so hard to come by. So I'm getting some people that are saying, I missed the, I missed the intro, um, respect there. I'm gonna type into the chat, just make sure you head to that link that's on your screen right now or to this one right here. The very last screen here has, um, has notes and where you can find all of this sort of thing. So. And, um, with, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Dan, we, um, I recorded it. So for asynchronous learners, I was gonna show it on the um, website, on the conference website, you'll see a link there. So if that's okay with Dan, we'll, we'll leave that up for anybody who needs to watch the beginning as well. Yeah, great. I'm going to sign off for folks, but again, my email address, my uh, contact info is up there. Uh, again, it's just been a, a real pleasure to work with, with some folks who are just working so hard right now. So take care of yourselves, please. Watch a movie. <laughs> great. Thank you again.